Okay, hi everybody. This is lecture number six. All revolutions display a pattern. Technological change in the 1800s and industrialization. My final lecture of this unit will help us prepare in part for our next unit of study, the Industrial Revolution and Imperialism. This lecture will provide you with, you know, a general background of the Industrial Revolution. We will then look at why the Industrial Revolution took place through our genos lens. The Industrial Revolution began around 1750 in Europe. Instead of making things by hand in their homes, people will begin making things using complex machines in factories. Instead of animal power, people will use new technology and use complex machinery instead. The Industrial Revolution led to many changes in people's lives. The Industrial Revolution is going to start in Great Britain and spread to continental European countries like Belgium, France, and Germany. Later, industrialization will spread to the United States and then to places like Japan. Remember Japan's industrial period from ninth grade? Yeah, you know, the whole Meiji Restoration period when feudalism ended in Japan? Yeah, well that started in the late 1800s, following industrialization in Europe and the USA. All right, well the Industrial Revolution started in Great Britain for four primary reasons, so write these down. Here are the four primary reasons. The first reason, geography. Great Britain had all the resources it needed to industrialize, like timber, coal, harbors, rivers, and iron. So, Great Britain had all of what we call the factors of production that it needed. So write that down, factors of production. It's a term used to describe the things that are necessary for any society to industrialize or make progress. All right, number two. Great Britain had a huge population. A huge population resulting from the agriculture, agricultural or agrarian revolution meant that more workers for the new factories were available in all those cities. Right, and inventions like Jethro Tull's seed drill, the enclosure movement, and new crop rotation techniques made agricultural advances possible, leading to a more stable food supply and eventually an increase in the population. I've said before that Europe's population grew by about 120 million people in a 100-year period. All right, number three, Great Britain had capital for investment. Remember that word, capital? It means money for investment. You've got money, you've got cash. Well, Great Britain had capital for investment. Overseas colonies had made many British citizens extremely wealthy. You need money to make more money, and there, there was plenty of money in Great Britain. And there were plenty of British entrepreneurs who were willing to begin new business ventures to make even more money. All right, and fourth and finally, technology. Great Britain developed technologies to create steam power using water and coal. This steam power enabled them to power large machines in factories. One of the most famous inventions from the Industrial Revolution was the steam engine, first made by James Watt. Steam technology was used to power large looms in textile factories. Textile is a fancy word for cloth. Don't be afraid of it. Yes, we need cloth to make the clothing that you buy at Old Navy and Abercrombie. Well, that and child labor. But dum dum. All right, that was a really bad joke. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Neither of those companies, I believe, use child laborers, okay? But, hey, other manufacturers do. So it's an ongoing issue even today, not just from the early industrial era. But I digress. All right, well, pretty soon the factory system developed in Great Britain. Before the Industrial Revolution, all goods were made at home in, pe in people's houses. This was called the cottage industry. People lived in a more traditional manner often taking on the professions of their parents generation after generation. Once the Industrial Revolution began, goods were produced in factories by large machines. So instead of working out of their homes, people traveled to work in big factories instead. That's a major change in how people did things. One of the first industries to use the new technology of steam power was the textile or fabric industry. Many people resisted this huge change, you know, as people often resist new ways of doing things, and hey, that applies to things even today. I mean, think of how many of your grandparents perhaps resisted email, Facebook, and texting, right? Well, a group of people who did this during the early 1800s who resisted such change included a group of artisan textile workers called the Luddites. 
Okay, so the Luddites were a group of textile artisans in Great Britain during the early 1800s who went around to the new textile factories destroying the new machines and sabotaging production. Why? Well, obviously the machines were putting them out of work as weavers and spinners, and they thought they could wreak havoc on mass production. But they were unsuccessful. Okay, mass production of goods. Let's talk a little bit about that. Okay, and I just realized that I should have said wrecking havoc, wreaking havoc, wreaking havoc. There you go. I hate that word. All right, here we go. Mass production goods and the availability, availability of these goods to the general public made the new technology worth it. So all those Luddites, well, they were out of work, but the fact that there was a mass production of goods and then even more things to buy, well, it made the new technology worth it for most people. Other new inventions from the Industrial Revolution, well, let's talk about them. One famous one was by Robert Fulton. Robert Fulton helped to create the first steam-powered boat, thus revolutionizing transportation. Another inventor who helped to make transportation more efficient, a guy named John McAdam from Scotland, who designed roadways and that drained water much better than previous roads. These roads became known as McAdam Roads. And you know, we use the same technology today for our throughways. <laughs> we really do. All right, so we're also going to see the age of the railroad begin. A guy named Richard Trevithick, or Richard Trevithick, he created one of the first locomotives. Now, you can look at all these people on your word list if you're having trouble spelling them. Otherwise, you know, sound them out phonetically and then go refer to your word list. All right. George Stevenson, Stevenson, pardon me, later improved on Trevithick's design. Railroads are going to revolutionize life in Great Britain, allowing raw materials to be shipped to the city and to the factory centers, and allowing finished products to be shipped to port cities, to, to be shipped all over the globe for profit. Railroad technology will spread to the United States and places as far away as Japan. Later on, innovators like Henry Ford in the USA will learn to use, um, you know, assembly line process for mass production of goods. This production technique will revolutionize how goods were produced and will spread back to Great Britain and other European nations. All factories use this process today, by the way. All right, so let's sum up the Industrial Revolution using Genos. G, government problems. You know, governments needed revenue in a period of time fueled by nationalism and the need for a competitive edge over rival nations. Industrialization would allow governments to solve this problem by creating goods to sell elsewhere in order to compete with their rivals. All right, E, economic problems or issues. You know, the cottage industry methods of production couldn't keep up with demand in given countries. People wanted new products and people in the cottage industry just couldn't produce them quickly enough. With populations overseas demanding new goods or products, factories were needed. N, new theories or philosophies or even ideas. Well, new ideas certainly apply. New inventions and innovations changed how goods were produced. The steam engine and railroad locomotive, they're going to revolutionize transportation. All right, O, oh, other revolutions. The agricultural revolution provided the framework for the industrial revolution. Innovations in technology later helped the industrial revolution take shape. S, Social inequality or social issues. Okay, making this one apply to the Industrial Revolution. Hmm. Well, there were definitely some social issues happening with a rising population in Great Britain. Following the Agricultural Revolution, which resulted in a population explosion across Europe, there weren't enough farm jobs available to support the growing population. And with the creation of factories, people will move to cities to find work and in the hope of, you know, finding a better life than they had had in the rural areas. So, social issues? Sure, that applies. All right, so there we go. Genos in action, and we'll talk more about the Industrial Revolution in our next unit. Thanks for listening. Bye.